What's up, Dope TV? Y'all ready for this interview? I'm ready, man. Hey. And you want to know what's really going on in New Jersey? Come on in, let me show you. Right here is the restaurant. You know, I say all the time, Ace Ounces and Chicken Wings. So, right here is the restaurant. You get your chicken wings right here. And here is what I call the sanctuary. It's right here at the joint too. Sanctuary, you can sit, chill, smoke weed, hang out, whatever. The lounge, this is the wave of the future. This is how the black market's gonna do it. We're gonna have lounges, we're gonna have music, we're gonna have things like that. You know, this whole Walmart's of weed, you know what they want? They want this doctor's office looking place. These nerdy looking guys selling you marijuana in canisters that you can't open, using tweezers. You don't want that. So in the ballot in the Garden State, a constitutional amendment legalizing marijuana. Top lawmakers and cannabis industry leaders went into the election confident that this would pass. And David, it did. Let's take a look here with a 59% reporting you see passing by 67% of the. Yes, yes, yes. Back again. You know what it is, man. This is your guy, Cash Williams. I'm out here. I'm out here in the Capitol today, man. It is dope in the garden and a lot of. Dope things are happening, you know, no puns intended. I'm here with NJ Weedman, the, the legendary uh, uh, NJ Weedman, if you will, man. Uh, a lot of dope things have just happened, okay? Uh, New Jersey just legalized uh, recreational use of cannabis, bud, weed, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, how, how you feeling about that, man? I got, I got mixed feelings. For one thing, it's not really legalization was happening is corporatization, all right? True, I am happy that if you get caught driving down the road and you got a joint, and eh, you're not gonna get arrested now, right? So that's fine. But there's a bigger picture. The bigger picture is the state is corporatizing all this. You know, they even stopped calling it marijuana and they're calling it cannabis. And what they just did was legalize regulated cannabis. And how are they doing that? They're creating a CRC board. They will license people, license corporations to sell marijuana, to possess marijuana, large amounts, and to grow marijuana, all in violation of federal law, by the way. And they will be doing this at the same time they're excluding the black market. People who are selling marijuana now, people who have been in this industry for years will be excluded in favor of these corporate, corporate types. Me, myself, listen, almost two years ago, I announced, you know, my opposition to this plot. You know, I said, listen, I, I've been selling weed off and on for 30 something years. I've caught felonies. I went to prison for selling weed. So, you know what? I said, I'm selling weed just like I'm white. I'm not getting off this can of bus. I'm still going to sell weed. I'm going to try to force inclusion. And if I'm arrested, in fact, I probably will be arrested. Sooner or later, they're going to have to do something about me and people like me, the black market, who continue to sell marijuana. And what I say is, if I'm arrested, I'm going to trial. I don't think the state of New Jersey can get 12. That's what that hashtag is about. Hashtag NJ can't get 12. And I mean 12 jurors to convict me. I think that I can sell marijuana right here on State Street, right across the street from City Hall. And if I'm arrested... If I'm prosecuted, I think that the jurors will find me not guilty because they can see, they will see, there's a plot. They're making it legal for rich white guys to have the Walmarts of weed and they sell a little noise about social justice, but social justice doesn't include people like me. Social justice won't include the thousands of people who went to prison for selling marijuana, for distributing marijuana. Now. They're going to let these other guys, mostly out-of-towners, I call them cannabaggers, they're going to let them come into the state, create what they call the cannabis industry. And when I say a cannabis industry, that's Caucasian acceptable marijuana. That's what cannabis is. It's marijuana. Marijuana has been marijuana for thousands of years. You know, in certain cultures, it's been called marijuana, ganja, weed, herb. Yes, they call it cannabis in Latin terms, a Latin word, actually. And... 
at some point to make it illegal, they start using the Mexican word, the Spanish word for it, marijuana. Well, now they're making it legal now. And what do they do? They change the name to an acceptable, Caucasian acceptable term, cannabis. And even in the language that they just passed, we just signed on, it says adult use of marijuana in the beginning, but then later it says it is not adult use of marijuana. They're not legalizing marijuana. What they're doing is making a constitutional amendment to allow it, and then they're creating a CRC board, and the CRC board will license people, will create regulated cannabis, and then for now, after the rest of the definition, it describes what's going to be legal as regulated cannabis, meaning if you buy it from one of the monopolies, one of the Caucasian cannabis corporations that they're setting up, then it will be legal. But if you get caught with marijuana not in a container, not bought from a, a uh, CCC, a Caucasian cannabis corporation company, then you will still get arrested. You will still get illegal. I admit, I sell marijuana, and I'm not getting off of this cannabis. I'm not getting off. I'm going to continue to sell marijuana. At some point, they're going to arrest me. At some point, I'm going to get my Rosa Parks trial. I'm going to have my Rosa Parks moment. I'm going to go to trial because I refuse to get off this cannabis. I will put the state on trial. I look forward to an arrest. I look forward to a prosecution. So, But until then, I'm going to continue to sell weed like I'm white. And I'm not even being racist about that. Just Google just Google the owners of all the CEOs right now in New Jersey. Google image them. You will find that they're all white guys. And that's what I'm talking about. Our politicians, white guys mostly, are writing the laws and writing the bills to legalize rich white guys. Now, I went to prison. People like me went to prison for selling marijuana. These guys aren't going to go to prison. They're not going to go to the penitentiary like I did. They're going to get pensions for selling millions and millions of dollars of marijuana, which is exactly what I was doing. Me and people like me, we've been selling marijuana for a long time. The entire state of New Jersey has been supplied by the black market for decades by guys like me. Now, the white guys are getting involved. They're calling it theirs. They're calling it cannabis now. There's symbols on Wall Street. They're creating these corporations. And what they're doing is excluding guys like me, guys who have been providing to the people for decades. Now, I don't know. If that's what you want, you want the Walmarts of weed, you can have it. I don't even care if they have the Walmarts of weed. But what I say is they should legalize us too. In fact, they should legalize us first. We have been providing a service for a long time, and we are going to continue to provide a service. The black market is more suited to providing than these few corporations that they're going to make a monopoly of. So until that time, until we're included, I'm not going to stop. I'm going to continue to sell marijuana. I'm going to continue to possess marijuana. I do not go to the ATCs now. I'm not a hypocrite. I will not be going to the future Caucasian cannabis corporations that they're creating. I'm going to continue to support the black market. And I ask you and your audience to do the same. Support the black market. Avoid this Caucasian cannabis monopoly that's being created under the guise of legalization. It's not legalization, people. It is corporatization. They're legalizing corpus corporations to sell, possess, grow to the people of New Jersey. And I think the people of New Jersey need to continue to get their marijuana, mainly from the black market that has been providing to them for the last few decades. You know, this war is not over to me. You know, actually, it just heated up. This war is not over. And when I say a war, hey, the government declared a war on people who smoke marijuana 50 something years ago with President Nixon. When they declared that war, people like me went to prison. We were prisoners of the drug war. Now, we won the war. Marijuana is basically becoming legal all over the country. You know, at least on state levels, it's becoming legal all over the country. But what's consistent all over the country, too, is while black men and brown men went to prison in record numbers, white men are now owning or getting 
uh, legalized through these state state initiatives. And, you know, I think it's wrong. Like, I don't care they sell too, but you got to include us too. And that's what they're doing. They are writing the laws for rich white men. And when they write those laws for rich white men, they exclude us. They exclude the people who've been doing it for a long time. Whether we court felons, whether we just don't have enough money to get involved. Like, when they're writing these laws and bills, they're writing these laws and bills and putting so many obstacles up for the little guy. You know, listen, I've been selling marijuana out of $5 jars for years. You know what I mean? Now, they say you got to be a millionaire to sell marijuana. Like, what? They've created, they're creating all these rules and obstacles that the average guy can't overcome. And they're doing it deliberately to set up an all-white cannabis corporation. Corporations, a monopoly to sell to the people. Sure, they're talking that crap. They're blowing smoke up people's butts, saying they're going to do social justice and this, that, and the other. Listen, their idea of social justice and their idea of minorities is everybody, except for rich white men. So women will, will get advantages. Jewish people will get advantages. Veterans will get advantages. But the people who've been providing for the last few decades won't be included because many of us caught Felons being insurgents against this, this war. And I find it amazing that in most wars, the victor splits up and divvies up the proceeds, the spoils of war. In this war on pot, the black market won. People like me won. Prosecutors like Senator Scatari, Senator Sweeney, they lost. Now they switch sides. They're trying to get into this. They're trying to, they're selling it out. They're selling, selling it out and they're selling it to corporations, other white guys. In the meantime, guys like us are getting excluded. The true victims of the war on drugs, the war on marijuana, are being excluded. And, hey, I'm being that voice. I'm standing up about it. I don't know. My life was ruined 20 years ago, 20-something years ago, when I was arrested for marijuana. Now I'm watching these guys, you know, get pensions. When I went to the penitentiary, no, I'm not going to sit back and watch that. This is what I'm doing. I want a civil disobedience case. I want a jury notification case. I want them to arrest me, to prosecute me, and to put me on trial before a jury of my peers. If a jury of my peers wants to send me to prison for selling marijuana, then so be it. I'll go to prison. But I think a jury would say, no, it's not. No, we're not doing that. And I think our laws should reflect that, that the people and the public are not down with that. We're not all down with this corporation stuff. You can have a corporation. You can have a Walmart so we eat all you want. But we need to have local home grow, local businesses. You know, I am operating a black market dispensary right now across the street from City Hall in Trenton, New Jersey, which is the capital, right on State Street. Now, I remember a couple of years ago, people made a big thing when Donald Trump said he could shoot somebody on Fifth Avenue and get away with it. I was saying prior to that, I can sell weed on State Street and get away with it. So for the last two years, though, I openly have done it. The state has not bothered me. They know. Who doesn't know that I'm selling marijuana? And again, I'm calling out the state. I just really want, I really want to be included. I want others like me to be included in this new era of legalization. And if they're not, they're going to continue to arrest people like me. And if they arrest people like me, I encourage everyone to take it to the trial. Take it to trial. Go to the people. Go to the public. The public will not put people in prison for marijuana now. I'm passing out the joints. I'm doing whatever. And my girl is there. I'm talking to my girl. She came with me. So I'm talking to her. She's like, yo. She's like, I can't believe you're sitting over there just chilling with Nas like it's nothing. I'm like, what? What?